Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my uh, student uh, master thesis graduation project. So I just graduated, I got my master's degree and I graduated my bachelor's degree a couple of years ago and I made a video about that so now I finally graduated master's and I decided to make a video on that. And just a quick note, in my country it works basically like that for architecture, you have to, you have three years of a bachelor for your bachelor degree and then a couple of more years for your master's degree and then you have to work for two more years and then finally you can take your like state test to get your architecture license and then you're in licensed architect so only seven years <laughs> Okay, so uh, I decided to, to share with you my uh, complete project. Now, I wanted to film my like final presentation that I did in school uh, and uh, actually I wanted to bring the camera and everything but I, it, I was so nervous. I never was so nervous for any project presentation so far but for this one I was so nervous and there were so many people so I, I just couldn't add that additional level of like nervousness by bringing in the camera and thinking about filming so I decided to leave it out and and I'm just going to go through my presentation, what, uh, what the project I made, why I made it in that way, how I designed it. And then I'm going to be sharing with you the comments that professors uh, made and then the final grade, of course. So it's going to be basically a reenactment of my, uh, my graduation presentation with, of course, all of the comments. So let's get into it. So th this is the project. And uh, as you can see, maybe if I grab just the uh, model, so this is the uh, site plan model. So basically it's a, uh, the location is at, uh, at this big square in my city where I live. And here there's like a roundabout and it's like the biggest roundabout in town, probably in the country. So it's like a big square and here there's like an open square for, for people. And then our location was this area over here. Now in this, on this side, here there were already some buildings uh, already built, so we had to kind of use the, the rest of the uh, city block for our project. So what I decided to do, I decided to block off these buildings just because the back facade over here, as you can see, it's kind of edgy and it doesn't really look nice. It's not a front facade, it's the back facade, it's really ugly. So I wanted to shield it off from uh, my project location. So I did like this big long, if you can see it over here, like this tall long house. And then I had the rest of the location opened up. Because it's the city center, because it's a nice place to kind of hang out, or it, it, it would be a nice place to hang out, and it was already a park, I wanted to keep that kind of park-like presence. So I decided to uh, build uh, my building, or like the main building, the main point of the project, is this sphere over here. And now the whole point of the project, or the team, was a science promotion center, or let's just call it a science center for short. And I, I wanted something that basically looks like a science center. When you look at it, I want it to be like a science center. So that's why I went with a big sphere, it looks like a big planet, and, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's the urban uh, uh, landscape uh, part of it. So when you look at it here we have this kind of funnel so the uh, the project uh, location was kind of sloped. Here it's kind of at lower level and here it's like six uh, meters higher. So we did have that kind of uh, angle angular uh, slope and uh, I had to kind of figure out the way to place my building on that. So my decision was to kind of cut in this funnel that leads to a an underground square. So it's an open underground square over here in this underneath this sphere and that's basically where you enter all of the buildings and the whole complex of this science center. So that was the, uh, the general idea too. So you go inside and then you get to that sphere and you can go into a sphere, there's a large spiral going all around or you can get go into some of like the presentation, uh, presentation parts, basically huge uh, areas where you can have some sort of exhibitions or something like that or conferences, stuff like that. And then all of the science labs are in this uh, long uh, building over here. So that was the general idea of the project, that was my concept and then if we can just do this without dropping the mic. Uh, okay, there we go. And then uh, of course I had that uh, sphere with a spiral going through it. Now that can be visible here 
if I can only find it. Here we go. So here are just some additional uh, drawings that they made. So as you can see over here, the big sphere has like a spiral going through it. Now some places it's going through it, some places it's going around it. The general idea was that you can basically use projectors to project uh, movies or some sort of science presentations on this big sphere and then people can go around the spiral and look at it. And inside of the big sphere is a big planetarium. So you can go inside and then you can go around and between the small sphere and the big sphere uh, is a space. And then inside of that, again, uh, it's a good idea to do some sort of presentations using projectors on the inside of the bigger sphere and on the outside of the smaller sphere. So that was my idea to make like the like the ultimate presentation uh, purpose room in, in form of this like planet with like the rings around it and it looks really cool, at least in my opinion. So that was the general project, that was the idea behind it. And here you can see all of the drawings. Now I will do some additional filming and then I'm going to be inserting inserts. You're probably seeing it already so I shouldn't probably talk about it. But anyways, so that was my project. And that was my general presentation. Uh, I'm nervous now. I was horribly nervous back then so it wasn't that good of a presentation I, I must admit but anyways that was the presentation so now I'm just going to be sharing with you what the professor said so uh, my uh, it's it's like a team of judges that judge your project and then they say do you pass do you not pass and which grade do you get now keep in mind that I got the best grade uh, 10 and uh, I think I was like between 9 and 10 and they kind of nudged it in the 10 direction I, I, I know the uh, what I missed what they didn't do and I, I'm going to be talking about that of course but first let's go through the comments and then I'm going to uh, comments from the professors and then I'm going to be talking about some of my own comments and what I think of the whole process. So uh, we had three professors and one teaching assistant. So the professors were like, there's one like main architecture professor and I was very lucky to have a professor that's like one of the best architects in the country and he's really famous. So it was uh, really good to be working with somebody that's uh, actually like an extremely accomplished architect for that. And also we had a professor that's for like structural engineering and uh, technolo building technologies, things like that. And also a very accomplished architect that uh, does all of these uh, constructions. So it was good to hear uh, his opinions as well. And then there was a professor and she is like uh, urbanism, landscape and uh, city design, I guess, city planning uh, professor. So uh, her job was to analyze the, like, the urbanism. And then the teaching assistant is of course uh, another architect architecture uh, professor. So uh, the comments uh, were like this. So it started off with the like the, the landscape uh, uh, professor or the urbanism professor. I'm not really sure how it's called in English or how, how do you call it in other universities. Uh, we call it urbanism. I, I, know, I know it's like city planning or something like that or in others. So I'm not really sure about the terminology, but uh, let's keep going. So uh, she had uh, just a few comments. Unfortunately, she didn't really comment the uh, like the <laughs> urbanism and the landscape design of my building. Uh, the only comments that she had were, uh, if I can just grab one of the uh, the drawings. So here in the floor plan for like this uh, long building, if you can see it. Uh, here my structural cores which house the elevator and the staircases are way too close to the entrance of the building. So uh, basically you don't have a large lobby and it's in the city center so it's really cool to have a large lobby in buildings like this and my building doesn't so that's a definite mistake. So uh, she just commented on that and didn't really comment on any of the uh, let's say urbanism uh, points of the project which was kind of disappointing uh, but I guess uh, she didn't really have that many uh, negative points about uh, my project. Uh, my personal opinion is that uh, my project really fits very well in the city center and in the project location but again I didn't really get that many comments on that topic which was a bit disappointing for me. Okay moving on the structural design professor was like really disappointed with the way that 
that I solved the whole sphere he said that it couldn't uh, probably couldn't really stand on its own or in the way that I designed it I did have some like structural trusses something like that but he, he didn't really want to go into it that much but he just said that it doesn't really work uh, which okay I, I, I can maybe see that I, I, I don't know I'm not really that uh, good with uh, building technologies and structure that wasn't my major so uh, not really something that I'm uh, very good with but I do know about concrete shells so I thought this could work but I guess it could use a bit more work on that side so that was his his comment and also he uh, made additional comments for example again for this floor plan which I, again I, I, I must agree it's a terrible mistake that they did make and if you look at the building uh, the whole building is looking towards this park over here and that's where I made like the uh, like the corridors instead of orienting the rooms towards the park I oriented the corridors towards the park which is uh, very bad I must admit so that was a mistake that I made and he also pointed that out and also the spiral that's going around the sphere uh, you basically have to go up the sphere uh, using that spiral and then go down the sphere using the same spiral and uh, that's a down uh, like a downside uh, pro ideally you would have two spirals and then you would use one to get uh, to the top and then the other to go down so uh, that's usually a best practice in a project like this so that's something I uh, maybe neglected to do so that was actually a really helpful comment and something that I would uh, work towards if I ever get some sort of a spiral project uh, in the future and then moving on the teaching assistant for uh, the uh, like the architecture major teaching assistant uh, she had comments uh, mostly because of my uh, modeling I did use uh, I did create these really uh, kind of realistic uh, realistic ish sections that really show like the depth of the project and in, in, in the sections I think I really represented the project very well uh, but the problem is uh, because I spent so much time on that I didn't really uh, spend any time adding the furniture and stuff like that so I had no furniture so it doesn't really represent present how good the uh, the whole space is functioning which is I must admit a very large downside but I kind of I kind of knew uh, to, to be honest I, I you know how when you're studying long enough uh, in the same school you kind of figure out what uh, what can you get away with and what's important and what's not I kind of knew that I can get away with not having a, a furniture if I do a good all-round uh, presentation as far as uh, as far as you can completely understand the project by looking at these 3d sections and renderings and all of that you don't have to think about okay how does this work it's always extremely visible from the project and uh, because of that I knew I can get away with not having any furniture and not thinking about that where I saved a lot of time uh, I must admit okay moving on and uh, finally the like the main professor who was like the the mentor for this project uh, he, he had comments about and he actually knows that they do this uh, Balkan architect persona and that I do uh, Revit tutorials and he kind of had a very interesting comment on that he said that uh, because I, I kind of rely on Revit so much to give me so much and it, it, it does give you a lot of good things it kind of takes so way with a bit it adds too much rigid uh, rigidity it makes my projects too rigid I guess the design uh, uh, and uh, his like advice for future is to kind of go back and forth between sketching and doing in Revit so maybe do a model in Revit do some constraints and then go back and kind of sketch it out and draw it on your own uh, and uh, draw it on my own and then go back in Revit and then print it out and draw and then go back in Revit print it out and draw do more of these back and forths where I can do a, a bit more free design with my hand and then add constraints in Revit and uh, add all of the dimensions so uh, that was one of the comments uh, the comment was also that I kind of did an overkill maybe at 
too much uh, add I, I, I may add it too much to the project uh, and maybe a few steps too far uh, for example the spiral uh, they all commented that it shouldn't be wood it should have stayed like uh, it should have stayed white the same material as the whole sphere so some that's something that I did that <laughs> that I guess I shouldn't have uh, but all in all uh, I'm very happy with uh, the way it went and I know all of the the things that I did miss uh, on doing I kind of did it on purpose to be honest uh, as I said you figure out how uh, architecture school works and then you do what you know that's really important to them and the stuff that you know that's not really that important you just don't do it at all so that was my approach and <laughs> luckily it worked and I got the best uh, the best possible grade uh, my project wasn't chosen for like the big presentation for like gallery stuff uh, and uh, it was another project in the, uh, in my like group and uh, good luck with that project but uh, I'm happy with the grade and I'm happy with the way it, 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 it went and I finally graduated so five years later here I am so anyways that's that's how it went I'm so sorry that I didn't film it there uh, it, it uh, I, I guess that the whole it was quite traumatizing the whole uh, the whole presentation. I don't know why. I don't usually get nervous be uh, before things like this, but for some reason for this I did. So that's why we're here. Okay, so that's my graduation project. I, I hope it was interesting just to see how, what this looks like. How does it look like in Serbia where I live? Maybe it's different in your country. Please tell me in the comment section uh, below. Uh, is this similar to your country or maybe is it completely different and maybe you can uh, tell, tell me in the comments uh, so what's it like in your country okay so yeah that concludes this video on my project thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and i'll be back in in a few days with another regular balkan architect tutorial and also one more thing if you want to get all of these uh, like project files the the revit files the like the 3d printing sphere that i did for my model i have a video on that link in the description if you want my renderings all of this stuff is available on my patreon first link in the description also there you can find some of my advanced revit courses all over one hour long okay so that concludes this video thank you for watching and i'll see you in a few days bye